All right, so how do you diagnose a bad caliper or a sticking caliper? So the first clue that the car is gonna give you if it has a bad caliper, so we're gonna raise the side that you suspect of having a bad caliper, and then we're gonna spin the wheel and see if there's any resistance. So in this car, the rear left has a bad caliper, and as you can see when I spin the wheel, it stops after a few seconds. And then when I try it on this side, the rear right, so the rear right wheel will spin just a bit longer than the rear left. And that's the first clue to know that something's up with the rear left wheel since it's not spinning the same amount as the other side. Now every car is going to be different when uh, spinning the rear wheels. If you do have a uh, rear diff with axles, then you're going to have a bit more resistance when uh, spinning the wheel. So that could throw you off a bit. But for cars with no rear axles or a, a torsion beam or just rear tables, so that when you spin the wheel, the wheel should spin for a few seconds and then come to a complete stop. All right, so the second thing we're going to look at now is brake pad wear. So as you can see, uh, the brake pads on this side are almost completely worn out. So I'd say about uh, two millimeters left. And on the inner pad, about three or four. And if we compare it to the other side, the rear right, we got way more pad life left. So you might be thinking, well, maybe the brake pads jammed up because of the rust. But as you can see, I could remove it easily with two fingers, so these weren't jammed at all. And even the inner one, I could move it with one finger. So that means they were moving freely, and that means that the caliper was squeezing them constantly. Since this car is only highway driven, um, I'm really surprised that it chewed up the pad that much. If your car is mostly highway driven, then your brakes will last a really long time compared to just city driving. And then you might suspect also that your guide pins are seized, but these guide pins came out nicely. So they were moving in the hole nicely and the top one as well. So now the only thing left is to blame the uh, caliper. It, the seal inside is probably sticking a bit. So a seized caliper is pretty easy to diagnose if the piston is completely seized. So when you go to compress it, it's not going to move at all. So the ones that are just starting to seize, you won't suspect the thing because the piston is just going to retract just fine. like so, with minimal effort. So you might be thinking, well, this is just a, this is a good caliper since the piston retracted, but probably what's happening is the seal inside is starting to go, and when it engages the brake pad, it won't disengage. Therefore, it's always engaging the brake pads and then just chewing them up. So it's always a good idea to periodically check your uh, brake pads and see for, uh, and check for abnormal wear. So this one we uh, kind of caught in time since we're just going to change the brake pads but if you're too late sometimes uh, it could chew up the rotor but this rotor we could uh, probably save. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace uh, the uh, caliper and the brake pads for uh, new ones and that should fix our uh, sticking caliper problem. Alright so the new caliper is on with new brake pads. Uh, it's going to be your choice if you want to replace the rotor. Some bad calipers can actually uh, chew up the rotor pretty bad if uh, you end up catching it too late. But for now we're just going to use this rotor until it's uh, worn down and then we're going to replace it. And always make sure you bleed the new caliper that you've just installed. Alright, so I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments below. And make sure you like the video and subscribe for more videos like these. Alright, take care. Peace.